That's what gets under my skin more than anything else. Look, don't tell me that this guy is intelligent and sharp and on top of things and somebody that people can relate to and somebody that is a devout Catholic and, and his faith inspires the things that he does when the man can't even pronounce the book of Psalms. I don't buy it. Don't pee on me and tell me that it's raining. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's daily dose of stupid, <laughs> Remember, this is deeply, deeper, deeply religious, devout Catholic Joe Biden in his Thanksgiving Day address. Watch. And if we do, and I'm sure we can, we can proclaim the palmist with the palmist who wrote these following words. The Lord is my strength and my shield. All right, so I, th there's something I want you to notice about this clip, and so I'm going to play it again here uh, just a second. But I, I want you to really zero in on watch his eyes and watch how he's paying attention because th this is the advantage of having somebody like me that's worked with the teleprompter before. You can actually see him where he gets lost so watch his facial expressions and watch how hard he's trying to figure out what he's supposed to say here. So watch his eyes. And if we do, and I'm sure we can. All right, it's right here. We can proclaim. See, that's where he stumbles. Palmist. He's trying so hard to figure out what that word is. With the palmist who wrote these following words. <laughs> the Lord is my strength and my shield. So obviously what's happening there is he's trying to say the psalmist. In other words, the person who wrote the book of Psalms. Now, there's obviously several different authors of the book of Psalms. David wrote a bunch of them. Solomon contributed a few, so on and so forth. You know, we'll, we'll dispense with the Bible lesson for another day. But that, that's why if you want to be safe, you say the word psalmist when you're talking about the Psalms, because that covers whoever happened to be writing that one particular psalm. Joe Biden is so lost on this and so biblically illiterate that he's never heard, apparently, of the book of Psalms. Now, I want you to think about that for a second, because we're not dealing with one of the more obscure books of the Bible. Of all the famous books of the Bible, Psalms is probably close to the top. Now, maybe the four Gospels, maybe Genesis and Revelation... I would say you can throw Exodus in there because a lot of people know about Exodus. But those would be kind of the contenders for what's the most popular or most famous book in the Bible. We're not talking about Haggai or Habakkuk. <laughs> these are not obscure minor prophets. These are things that people that are not Christians even should know. People that have never gone to church should at least be somewhat familiar with, if nothing else, just by sheer osmosis of living in a country where there are religious people, should know the book of Psalms. This is Joe Biden who has been on this earth for 70 plus years that apparently doesn't know what a psalm is. But don't worry, guys, he's deeply religious and his faith really inspires everything that he does. Has this guy ever picked up a Bible? Seriously? And that's the thing that I think <laughs> bothers me so much about it. Because you can see just how befuddled he is. He has no idea what this word is. has no idea how to pronounce it. it. It would be one thing if it were just a normal gap. But you can tell by the way he reacts that this is not just like a, a mere reading error. He's This is a word he's completely unfamiliar with. And <laughs> I've made Bible-related mistakes. I've made them on the air before. It happens. And with as much content as I do, as, much, as often as I'm in front of a camera, especially dealing with Bible-sensitive material, you're going to occasionally make those mistakes. I try to keep them to a minimum, but they happen. 
This is a guy that can't even pronounce the name of the book in which the scripture itself is found. I mean, this is rookie level stuff. There are a group of kids in front of my church every single Sunday night, back when we had Sunday night services before the virus hit. The, every single Sunday night, the kids gather up on the front pews and they name off the books of the Bible. And none of them have ever pronounced the book of Psalms, the palmist. And I'm talking about two and three year olds that are doing this. And Joe Biden isn't even at their level of biblical literacy when it comes to this. Now, to be fair, anybody remember 2 Corinthians? You may remember, if I'm not mistaken, this speech was given at Liberty University, which made it even funnier that President Trump, who was kind of the darling of evangelicals or some evangelicals, I'll put it that way, in the Republican primary, and this is the thing that we, he was mocked relentlessly for by people like me, by the way, I might add. Uh, I was thought that was pretty funny, too. But at least with 2 Corinthians that Trump accidentally says 2 Corinthians instead of 2 Corinthians, at least he got the name of the book itself right. The only thing he messed up is the, 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 um, the number in front of it and how it's commonly pronounced. At least he got Corinthians right. And Corinthians is a much more obscure book of the Bible than Psalms. And I don't mind mocking both. In fact, I have. So obviously I don't have a problem with that. What bothers me is the media picked up on it and that thing was on repeat for like 24 hours for the next news cycle. You didn't hear anybody after Thanksgiving, talking about Joe Biden screwing up the name of a book of the Bible. That was nowhere in mainstream media, and so there is an obvious double standard there, but that's basically old news that the media was in the tank for Biden at this point. But these are people that are elected by people that are similarly biblically illiterate. And in this last go-round, because of, you know... Donald Trump surprised me on a lot of things and governed significantly more conservatively than I ever thought he would. I did vote for President Trump in the last election and was very much pulling for him to win. Still pulling for him to win, in fact. But this is a commentary on the state of our country at this point. That the people at the very top, the ones whom we have selected as our leaders, just have no familiarity with the Bible whatsoever. It's not important to them because ultimately it's not important to us. There was a time where our leaders were biblical scholars. They knew the Bible better than the average person. When you look at, and I'm looking at a, you can't see it, I know it's off camera, but I'm looking at a life-size print, an actual size print of the Declaration of Independence right here hanging on my wall signed by 56 men. Nearly half, not quite, but nearly half of them had advanced college level or above Bible degrees. Those were our leaders at that period in our history. And now the people that, even if you believe that the election was stolen, either way, whether it's Trump or Biden, the one that we have selected as our leader now, barely has any biblical literacy. We've fallen a very long way in that respect, and it is sad to see. But ultimately, the thing that I dislike the most about this whole situation surrounding Biden and not knowing enough about the Scripture to even be able to pronounce the book of Psalms correctly is that I can't stand the BS. That's what gets under my skin more than anything else. Look, don't tell me that this guy is intelligent and sharp and on top of things and somebody that people can relate to and somebody that is a devout Catholic and, and his faith inspires the things that he does when the man can't even pronounce the book of Psalms. I don't buy it. Don't pee on me and tell me that it's raining. That's the thing that bothers me the most about it. I mean, it would be one thing. It would be one thing if Joe Biden were like, yeah, Bible's really not all that important to me. God's really not all that important to me. Just not my thing. 
I'm not even necessarily saying he has to tell me that he's an atheist, even though, you know, his stances on abortion and gay marriage and that eight-year-olds ought to be able to lop off their privates and start referring to themselves as the opposite gender would pretty much inform me on that. And that would be far more important and is more important than what he gives lip service to. But I could kind of understand him or, or wouldn't be irritated as much by it if Joe Biden can't pronounce the word Psalms and isn't necessarily somebody that claims to have any connection to spirituality, but when you're using that as a rationale for why people should vote for you, kind of hard for me to buy into that. that. That's the thing that gets under my skin the most, is that you're trying to push this idea that this guy is super intelligent and sharp and aware and can think on his feet, and his old age isn't a problem, he's not really senile, and oh yeah, he's also somebody that is a faithful Christian that will be guided somewhat by the Word of God, and then he can't even pronounce the book of Psalms. I'm not going to buy that. I'm sorry, you need to look for someone else to sell that bill of goods to, because I ain't buying it. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.